right, here we go. Trick Daddy, welcome back to Vlad TV. What's happening, man? We appreciate you having me. Absolutely. I think it's been about three years since our last yeah, one. About, yeah, give or take a year. Right. But, you know, me and you actually go back, like, it got to be at least over 10, 12 years. I about, remember about doing 13, interviews with 14 you. 13, 14 years. Yeah. You I can't remember, tell you know, them too much. They go, if, we, if we go to get throwing out numbers like that, they're going to be trying to figure out how old we is. <laughs> <laughs> right, man. Because I remember I would interview you in the van after the listening party, you know, when the DVDs was doing, you know, before Vlad TV. Right. Hey, man, listen. Number one, congratulations on how long you've been in the game. And man, the I appreciate it. I made. appreciate it. Oh, yeah, man. We have one of the originators. Really, I feel of, of the whole Southern sound right now sitting down with us. I, hey, man. And you see I'm rocking the old school Two Live Crew t-shirt. And you know what I'm yeah. saying? I was looking for the bandana, but they ran out of it because there's so many fake gangsters these days. You know what I'm saying? You know, back in the days, you had to look your part. But if you was an athlete, if you was a football player, you had to have muscles. Mm. If you was a basketball player, you had to have height. If you was a, a rapper, depending on, if you was a conscious rapper, we knew you was a militant brother. You had your shirt tucked in. You had the clean face, the clean shave, or the bald head, or, 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 or the kufi on. If you was a gangster brother, a gangster rapper, then we know you had to have on the cowboy hats, the dickies, or, or the, the, the starter jacket, the, you know what I'm saying, to represent your city. Now we got these gangster rappers wearing skinny jeans and fingernail polish and lipstick. And this shit crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, and it's a lot different than when we were kids, man. It's a whole different game now. And I think, I think the biggest thing is that I'm from an era of, I'm from a, the era of the 70s baby era, let's say it that way, where our mother did a lot of struggling, a lot of struggling that the 80s babies didn't have to go through. And you know what I'm saying? And after the 80s babies, we have the ecstasy babies. And then after the ecstasy babies, the kids now, these are the Molly babies. So how the world going to be another 10 years from now? I don't know. But remember, the, their parents are on heavy Mollies. Their parents are on heavy lean and fake loud. So that's a lot of peer pressure and a lot of uh, brain pressure to these kids. But meanless to say, we listen to and we accept it and listen to all kinds of music, all general of uh, all general music, everything from the East Coast, West Coast, at a time when they wouldn't really accept down South music. They wasn't accepting us, but we listened to the Coogee Raps and the AZ and the EPMD and the Cool Mo D's and Heavy D's to LL all the way to uh, NWA. We listened to that. But when, we, when I started rapping, as you know, when I traveled the East Coast and, and the West Coast, I was doing interviews with people that wasn't familiar with my lifestyle. They wasn't familiar with my background. They wasn't familiar with my sound. They, they, they thought that everything was, was bass or booty shaking music. You know what I'm saying? And with the encouragement of Luke telling me to go ahead and, and, and take it there, because he did, and a lot of people learned from the BET Awards, a lot of people realized that Luke invented the explicit content sticker on this because he wanted everybody to have an option to monitor their kids, an option to listen to the clean and dirty version. So when I started making music, I said to myself, I'm going, I'm going to give them my autobiography. I'm going to tell them my story. I'm going to explain to them that thug niggas do exist, but they don't live that long. You understand what Absolutely. I'm saying? I'm not going to come back and pull a Donald Trump on them and talk and, 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 and point fingers and call people out of name and say things like you knew what you was in it for. Instead of instead of directing them later, I'm going to give them instructions. Now, the first time I rapped about a, a car, I was talking about a Mercedes Benz and that, you know, that was a black man dream back in the days. You wanted a Cadillac or you wanted a Mercedes. So... When I talked about that car, I remember my line was, I want to buy me a Benz, but a 50 grand show. Now, new rappers, mixtape artists, internet sensations, YouTube famous, Instagram famous dudes riding around in $200,000, $300,000 cars. It's not believable. 
When something's not believable, there's no longevity in it, and it hurts the future of hip hop. So I got together with a lot of old school rappers, a lot of, not, not I won't even say old school, because old school is for, for, for R&B music and pop music. I'm gonna say a lot of legendary rappers. I was just recently on the tour, Legends of Hip Hop, Legends of the South, the hip hop tour, with me, Mystical Juvie, uh, Bum B, Scarface, uh, Eight Baller, MJG, and Pastor Troy. Too Short was on a lot of the shows, and Slick Rick came through every now and then, and the people loved it. It wasn't like the New Era concert where everybody's on their phone. It's not like the New Era football or sports game or basketball game where they asking you after a, a slam dunk or a touchdown, they're looking at you like, what happened? Because they're in their phone. And I, I go back to the days when I didn't post, I didn't, selfie didn't exist. The word loyalty was more than a tattoo. And I didn't have to worry about posting a picture in an outfit, for instance, this, and worry about, well, I can't wear this tomorrow. Because if I want to wear this again tomorrow, in my era, I'm going to wear it again tomorrow. And these people have got, got, got more into buying outfits off of mannequins. So when you see a bad girl sitting at the bar and she don't want to move and she not getting up and she not dancing, but she look good, it's a bitch over there in the corner with her same outfit that she picked up off the mannequin. So I understand all those things and I say to myself, I have to, I have to, not that I left, but I have to come back into the center, come back into the light where I have to enlighten the younger generation from our, our kids, me and your age, our kids, the real fans of music kids, because a lot of these fans now are, are, are minimized, uh, they, they minimize because based on likes, views, and, and such things like that. People who don't even have a record for sale is making ten, twenty thousand dollars And five years ago, a lot of lucky dudes were making forty, fifty thousand dollars to play at a club. That was unheard of in, in, in my days. Not knocking them, but I think that, that hurt it because a lot of the D-boys, a lot of hustlers, a lot of investors invested in dumb decisions like that, which crippled the game. So I'm gonna bring it back. I'm gonna let niggas know two singles per album, two videos per album, 12 songs, pick a single. Uh, we need a way to monitor these niggas. We need a way to single-handedly pick them out and say, no, you're not qualified to be a rapper until you take those beans out your hair. You can't be a rapper because you dyed your shit blonde. Like, you know what I'm saying? We need to, all that, we need to put a, a, a stop to that. <coughs> and I just did the deal with, with Slip and Slide slash Atlantic, Trick and Trina albums called TNT. So we, we got the first single, Smooth Selling, that's out right now. We're working on a second single featuring my artist as well as Slip and Slide artist, Mike Smith, I think one of the hottest in the South. It's called Paradise, talking about the old days, talking about how Miami used to be. And I, and I appreciate all the support y'all been giving us, you know what I'm saying, everybody else. There's usually a gossip. Y'all, I don't look at Vlad and I don't look at uh, certain entities as gospel situations. Like the big dude, the, the, the big guy that, Wendy Williams, that big dude right there. His show is based on assassinating people characters, pointing out flaws, going to people's master bedrooms, personal issues. I would never, I've never seen you do it and I appreciate it. I would never benefit off making you look bad. That's not my thing. Now, before you got into music, you had kind of a rough life. Very. Your mom had 11 kids by 10 different men. Exactly. So were you guys all living together or were oh, you kind of okay. spread out? This is how it went. We were set up. This was, this, this was well orchestrated. They said, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to free the slaves. We're going to leave them certain lands and certain properties, knowing that we did not allow them to read, write, spell, knowing that we did not allow them no schooling. And when we did give them schooling, it was segregated. So we're going to leave them property, not knowing that five, ten years from now, that we're gonna take the property from them because they didn't pay their taxes, okay? We went from that to, okay, now that's all from welfare, that's all from WIC, that's all from food stamps. 
Free health care, what they call Medicaid. Okay, now let's build a project. This is a this is a ghetto environment to the fullest, but we're gonna give them things like one dollar rent, free park and recreation for their kids, for summer programs. But hold on, you can't have no man staying with you. You can't have no man. So as growing up, as every year or every other year. I would meet a different guy as a mentor. To me back then, I looked at it as a curse. Now as I think of it, it was a blessing. All of which who accepted a role at the time that they, know, they did not know it was impossible for them to play. A, a, a position that they did not know that was impossible for them to keep because if a man lived with you, you would get evicted and lose your hood. If your child caught a charge, you have to sign custody over to this child to another parent, a family member, or somebody close that's not living in hood, and you have to reassign their schools and all this. So while I'm thinking, all these men are gonna do the same thing. They're gonna get my mama pregnant and they're gonna run out her life. I didn't realize all this because we were young. 50, 60 kids in one classroom. They paying the teachers between 30 and $40,000. That ain't even enough money for them to pay back that high ass loan that they got the, the uh, education degree in. So with all that being said, we learn things like survival. Our era, my era, your era. We learn things like raking yard, running errands, uh, pumping gas at the gas station, bagging groceries at the store, selling water, selling fruit selling lemonade we learned all those things that as years went by they required permits <laughs> so while we was trying to get out of the ghetto we was getting pushed further and further back in, in the ghetto and the way i grew up a four bedroom with 12 people when i sang a song drawing the wind pearl way seven more like me referring to the boys because eight boys and three girls and I said, if it wasn't home before them, it wasn't no more covers, that's the comforters. You know, we, you know, we, we use a different slang in, in Miami. And if I say the old girl, the old girl means mama, old boy means daddy. And mama usually gets all the props and all the respect and all the attention in the ghetto because remember, daddy can't live there. So at this time, the mailman, the garbage man, and the county workers, they get all the pussy. So mm -hmm. all the illegitimate kids, fathers, work on the docks, work for the county, and do all these things. So they say, okay, you know what? These ladies try to have all the sense. That's cut them off welfare. So now, no more welfare. In order for you to get food stamps, you got to go down there, put your baby daddy on child support, and you got to know where your baby daddy at. And my mama era, where your baby daddy? I don't know. I don't know who my baby daddy is. I was drunk. I was on drugs. I, I was surviving. Blah, blah. Okay, sign here. Now, community hours. We need to know where your baby daddy at. We need his social security number, his address. If he in jail, we need to know what jail he in. We need to know the cell number, the DC number. That's impossible. So they give the lady food stamps for so many months. And when they find the dude, he's already in the rear. So now, there's a separation from mother between mother father and kid is the kid is in the middle of it getting pulled and tugged the daddy is trying to explain i was doing what i can for you and the mom was like no he didn't he left us in the project and and now the kid have to choose mama or daddy so that's what we come to now that's the that's the i am a product of my environment but i was i was fortunate enough to successfully be released from prison at the age of 19 after being twice before I was 17 and start a career with the great, by the grace of God and the help of Luther Campbell and Ted Lucas at Slip and Slide Records to, to have helping financially take care of my family up until this point here. And if anybody tell me there ain't a God, it's got to be the devil that's talking. Yeah, I mean, I think that's an excellent point because 
the system is it financially incentivizes women to have broken homes to not have men in the house the more kids you have the more money you have where if you think about it if you do it the opposite way and say okay look here's two low-income people we're going to give them more money if they're together if they get married right you know what i'm saying if they if they if you create a two-parent household, because I don't if care you stay what together, woman you are. If your kids graduated yeah. school, if they kept a right. certain grades point average. But, right. uh, but, uh, but it's opposite of that. So this yeah. will be living in, and just like with, you know, I've been dealing with lupus for the last 14 years. You, you're familiar with it. You did a, a story on it before. And yeah. what bothers me about the lupus is not what people saying, are you sure you have lupus? Or, Ugh, what is lupus? It's not sexually transmitted. For one, it's not hereditary, so that don't mean my kids necessarily gonna have it. And like every disease that exists in the United States of America, there's never a damn cure. They use us as lab rats and they make us test all these medicines and charge us all these amounts of money if and if the medicine works. And it's always they try to maintain or control diseases instead of trying stem cell research, instead of trying free medical, free health care like Canada and other countries do. And they give me a, a pill for lupus, which is an antibiotic um, steroid, and they give me another pill for something they can't even explain. But then they give me three other pills, one for my blood pressure, one for my kidneys and one for my liver. And I'm like, okay, I came in this motherfucker with nothing, left out with lupus. Now I'm going out with five pills with a possibility of a kidney or a liver failure. Fuck it, throw all the pills away, i die from lupus. I have a better chance with the one thing. And we need to learn, we need to, we need to get our kids more educated. We need to prepare them more for the future and, and notice that nothing stays the same. Everything changes and we need to, we need to kind of reverse that role where people are constantly dying. There's people our age and younger that are having heart attacks and strokes and aneurysms. We never heard of that growing up. Only thing we heard of our grandma when they hit 50 or 60, talking about their knees and their back and, and heartburn. Okay, that's understandable. But you, you 35 year olds dying from massive heart attacks and aneurysms, this is ridiculous, man. We, we, got to, we got to let, if we can't figure it out, we got to set the stage for our kids to be able to do what they need to do in order to become grandparents one day. Now, when you first started coming out, your first album came out after Tupac got killed. Right. But, but, but well, I, I know your second album was called, you know, Thug.com. But were you calling yourself a thug on your first album too? The first album was called Based on the True Story. Right, yeah, I know that, but I mean, were you calling yourself the a thug, thug that com, time? The thug.com, to be honest, I think we slept on that. I'm a, I'm a, I believe a lot in faith, and I believe in karma, and I believe in, I believe in being able to see the future. I believe, I, I'm a visionary, and I saw the difference when I went to prison how, how cell phones, cell, back when I, before I went to prison, we had beepers. We had beepers when we could, when I could beep you and talk about something illegal by using two or three numbers. When I see we went from that to the cell phones and from, from cell phones to digital TV and wireless, and wireless this and wireless that, I told Ted at Slip and Slide, I say, you see George Jetson's? Somebody had to vision that. Somebody had to believe in that to make a whole cartoon uh, series based on computers and robots. I say, I give it 20 years, computers gonna control the world. And we never, only thing we ever did was bought www.thug.com. We never thought about how the money was gonna be made off of it and all that. We just knew that what it was. And plus, we were so busy getting out fighting we was fighting from the bottom. We was in a bucket of crabs and we was at the bottom. We were so busy getting our name out there, getting our story out there, getting our life and, our, and trying to stay off the hustling end of the streets till we were so busy surviving, we could never have, we, we didn't have time to invest or we didn't have time to dream. 
We was living. You understand what I'm saying? We wasn't left. I don't know nobody who was who grandparents left them inherited. The only thing I inherited was a light bill because they gave me a light bill once I got my first place from 1976. And I owed them $200 from 1976. And I told them I was four years old. I was no more than between two and four years old. Ain't no goddamn way this is my motherfucking bill. And I realized then the lights had been in all my brothers and sisters' names. So that's the only thing we inherited. So when we came out with the WW dot, it was crazy. If you remember how to how I come on, we're not entering the first days, the last seconds, or the last minute or something. But now you're online to www.thug.com. And then it's like, for the thug, uh, uh, uh. And I'm like, the Luke, the Luke speech at the BET Awards, I don't know if you caught it, but it almost made me cry. I actually teared up twice because I know his story because I grew up as a pack jam junkie. I grew up in the same projects him and Betty Wright grew up in. The same poker bean projects that they talk about on the first 48 that were all bets are off. The rules are totally different now, of course, but all he done for the youth, all he did for the kids, all he did for the city, what he did for music, and many people he helped pay their bills over the years, as many artists as he had signed that sold platinum and gold albums and records, he never was nominated, and I wasn't either, believe it or not. With three platinum, two gold albums, I never been fucking nominated. But that's why, and take it into my, and take it to the house, I was like, play my shit. And I remember going East Coast first time doing interviews. They didn't even have my record. They was interviewing me, and they was at the break. They was like, "What's your name again?" I'm like, "Man, let's get the fuck out of here." But I, when I learned one thing. You have to get respect in your own house before you can walk outside and get respect in the streets. You have to get respect in them streets before you can get respected in that city. You have to get respected in that city before you can get respected in that county. And that's worldwide. Your radio station, the people who, 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 who call all the shots in your town have to respect you before you can leave that city or that town or that state and get respect. So we have to stick together, man, as one, man. That's the only way it's going to happen, man. It's us against everybody else. Well, I remember when I, when I first started hearing about Trick Daddy, you know, the first album came out and, and I saw it circulating around. I didn't really, you know, I didn't really listen to it. But then when the second album came out and Nan came right. out, that was, that was the big hit. And a lot of people, and, and believe it or not, a lot of people don't know what Nan means right now. Like really? when girls come from New York, I'm like, who you, I, I'm gonna come see you. I'm like, who you with? Me and my girlfriend. I'm like, your girlfriend? Oh shit. We finna have a threesome. And she be like, no, this is my best friend, my friend girl. I'm like, okay. Down here, don't girlfriend me and you go together. You know what I'm saying? So they, they wanted, they, they never to this day ask me, what does now mean? What does it mean? Now mean nothing else, nothing like, nothing close to. That's what Nan. And I always, I always ask girls, you got any churn? And they was like, what? Churn is short for children. And that, that's just my ghetto mentality. That's how we, we, we always did it down here. Great song, though, man. It's one of those timeless, one of those, one of those timeless records. And, and that was the record that introduced Trina to the world. And, and exactly. And Trina was saying the things way worse than Lil' Kim did it. Because it was, Lil' Kim did it with class. Trina did it from right here. From, you know what I'm saying? Fuck my five or six best friend. And then, <laughs> and one of my favorite artists, Foxy, she never was that, she never was that, that ghetto girl to me in my mind because she was, she finessed the mic so well. Trina just did it a whole totally different way to every man Every girl wanted to be Trina, and every man wanted to be with Trina. If Trina was a Kardashian, she would be the richest Kardashian. So before, before Trina, the rapper, Trina was actually dating your brother. Now, you were messing with Trick's brother. Mm -hmm. um, was that like a serious relationship, or you guys were just kind of... Yeah, no, we were in a relationship. I was in high school. I think I was about to graduate, maybe like a couple months after. And uh, yeah, I was in a real relationship. It was like one of my... It was like kind of like a first relationship. First love. Yeah, and um, he was an amazing guy. 
and he was killed. Yeah. And he got shot how many times? I have no idea, but it was... I heard it was some insane number, yeah, like it was, it was 30 times or, or probably something. Probably more. It was a crazy number of times. It was really horrific and really crazy. It was a very, very disturbing moment, that whole situation. I never really understood. I was really young, and I, I just didn't understand how somebody could be so great of a person and someone could do that. Like, it was, it was just a crazy thing. My brother, who was, my brother was brutally killed uh, five months before I was released from prison. And that was my brother, old lady. I also knew Trina from grade school, middle school, from high school. So to put lyrics with our lifestyle, her personality, and my, my, my mind set, it was, it was a no-brainer. And, and, and it, was, it was exciting after, after we released the record and we finally went on the road. Because I, I used to argue with the label. They want me, go promote this, go perform the song and that's promotion, and I used to be like, no, you make a fool of yourself if you go out there and you do a damn record and nobody don't know the record and they looking at you like this. I was like, that's make the record hot first. So we used to go out hand in hand passing out CDs. And years later, my true fans would be like, man, you the real one, man. You remember you actually, could you sign this? I'm like, what is that? That's something you had me three years ago. You had to tell me, I want you to sign. This means so much to me. And after those first couple of months, after we released that record and being on stage for about 30 minutes and then finally doing now, nigga. And when it got the Trina part, the crowd didn't know what was going on. And I was like, well, my ladies, I need y'all to help me with this one. And Trina come out the back. Oh, my God. We got the bitches back. Once you, and you know, that's the era where the niggas was following the bitches. Not nigga, a lot of niggas is more in into, the, into they self into the, than the women now. But that was the era, the era that when the women were going, we was, the, the dudes were sure going. We were going, we want to know, is it going to be some hoes there? That was the, that was the question. And I, I think that was a brilliant start. And, and Trina been going and, and, and holding it down pretty well as, as well. And, and we have other offsprings and other things that happen with slip and slide in the city and the state itself. In the whole South, <coughs> from Texas to um, Louisiana and Mississippi, Georgia and Alabama, we did a lot of things. We, we, made, we made a lot of noise, man. And I, and I just appreciate all the support that the fans have given us, you know what I'm saying, all through, the, through all these years. And I want everybody that's listening, everybody that's watching this, I ain't no motherfucking, what they call us? Um, I can't even think of the fucking name. They call us old, old something. Old heads? Old head. I ain't no motherfucking old head, nigga. I got more joys than you, nigga. I ain't no, I never be a fucking old head, nigga. I'm, I'm a legend in this game. I'm the mayor. I'm the CEO and president of the Eater Booty Gang, nigga. I'll never be an old head, nigga. Uh, Gabriel Union just did an interview with Sway where she said that she eats uh, Dwayne Wade's booty. You heard about that? Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and she, you know, and she, she wasn't ashamed Man, of it. Man, praise God. Praise God. I, I respect Dwayne Wade. And I respect, I actually met Gabrielle years before I ever met Wade. Both of them are wonderful people. And it ain't no sense to being, hey, it ain't no sense to being married when you're not happily married. Ain't no sense to having fun when you ain't enjoying it. You don't have to put out sex tapes. You can just tell the story. When I'm in prison, when everybody was going crazy over the over the uh, the swank in the hustler magazine, I was reading the the literature. I was reading the one when the lady was like, and he stroked his heart. He stuck his his heart man piece inside my cunt and and love juices with the flow. And I was like, oh shit, oh shit, I'm about to suck that pussy when I get out. And then I was. I, I'm the first one that ever ate pussy on the record. On I be your player, and now I we graduated because I I was I was raised with manners. I learned to address older people as yes, ma'am, yes, sir. I learned when you walk into somebody's house, you speak to everybody. That's why I don't go to church, because I realize a lot of these crooked preachers are having affairs with majority of the women in church, and I don't go in nobody's house trying to fuck with their hoes. Now, as far as the eat a booty game. 
if you look the next time you eat some pussy, just look. About two centimeters below is the ass. I just say hello sometimes. How you doing? Just that's the way I was raised, man. Remember, no pee pee, no doo doo. No pee pee, no motherfucking doo doo. Keep that thing fresh, clean. Get them wet ones, them wipes, everything. When when a, when a woman be talking about, let me go, let me go in the bathroom and freshen up. Uh uh-uh, uh, you supposed to already been fresh, bitch. But, right, because when I interviewed Trina and I asked her about the whole eat a booty thing. You know, Trip was one of the first ones to do the whole, to put guys on the, you know, just being extra nasty. So, I mean, I'm not surprised by that. But, I mean, he just only talk about stuff that happens normally in people's bedroom, but it's just not talked about. It's a personal, private thing. It's a whole bunch of guys that definitely does that. And a lot of them just sitting back like, whoa, he exposed us, you know? And, I mean, when you're intimate with somebody, what you do is what you do. You don't, this is just what you do. People do all kinds of stuff, you know? We just Ooh. don't run around talking about, oh, I'm eating butt. But you do. A lot of the, uh, yeah, you do. Most of your favorite rappers that you interview, they do. All of them do it. Right, especially under the influence. And I think, I think over 65 to 70% of sex is in motion while you're under some influence or something, whether it's, a, 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 whether it's a, a, an enhancement pill or some alcohol or some weed. So some people go look at this and say, for a man to eat booty is gay. Let me explain something to you. One thing I'm gonna say this to you. I am not homosexual. I, I, I am not homosexual. I am not homophobic. I have nothing against gay and lesbian men or women because they're not for me. They're for you gay and lesbian lovers. And I have not seen one homosexual in a relationship with another homosexual. So y'all need to come out the closet and stop trying to point your finger at me. I know who I am. Do you know who you are? When I'm talking about eating booty gang, I was not speaking of men eating men booty. I was speaking of man eat woman, and yes, woman eat man. I like to get ate out too. I only take baths. I stay prepared. Okay. So where would you draw the line with that? Would you say that using a strap on with a woman is gay? I I, I don't like when the lesbian women pull out the strap on, I think it's I think they have some type of mental illness because you're portraying to be a man to a whole extent, but yet you're telling this woman that she don't need a man. Mm. For what's gay to me is a man that's always that want to holler at this woman, that woman, this woman, that woman, this woman, leave her, try to talk to her. Five kids don't take care of none of them. Talk about another dude holding a conversation with a woman, trying to get her attention, telling her, oh, yeah, man, I'm raw than trick. I'm raw than him. And, and don't, that's gay. The rest of the people that, li- that actually do, com- uh, that uh, participate in gay activity, that's their way of lives. We have to respect them people's minds. You have to respect their mind. We have nothing against them. They, that's their way of life. There could have been a whole lot of other worse things in the world that affected you. Being gay to a person shouldn't affect you if you're not gay, if they're not insulting you, or they're not causing havoc on your relationship, your kids, or your family. You people have to learn to mind your own business. That's how my mama got pregnant. She wanted to know what my daddy had going on. Well, you know, speaking of that, we had interviewed uh, Boosie. They're trying to make all everybody fucking gay. That's what I think. They're, 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 they're putting it on our culture. They're putting it on, they're putting it everywhere. Gay, gay stuff is everywhere, you know. And I think they're, they're just trying to do it to make a monetary gain. You know, they're not doing it for the gays. They're not really fans of the gays. They're doing it for monetary gain, man. They're trying to make money off these people, man. You know, you got cartoons that are, they have gays on cartoons. Like, these are kids. Let kids make their own decision if they want to go that way. You know, six and seven year olds, five year olds shouldn't be turned on to gay cartoons when their mind not even developed yet. You know, what if they like how that cartoon talk? What now you 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 you're forcing them to be gay? That I I, I believe even with looking at the uh, Empire from 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 season one, show number two, I knew Buddy was gay. But we, this is on a, this is national TV, primetime TV. 
there's probably more kids watching it because it come on right before bedtime. It's probably the last thing that they're going to see before they lay down and go to sleep. That's one thing, being gay, but you're actually having sex on TV. You're actually kissing on TV in front of these kids. And then I think that everybody being gay should be your own right. I think that everybody should be raised, given an equal opportunity to figure out what their sexual preference is. Back in my era, if you were gay, girl or boy, you had to wait till you was grown or at your mama house to come out the closet. Now we have middle school, elementary school kids that is announcing they're gay, and we have gay couples trying to adopt the same sex kids, and I don't think it's fair to the kids. I don't think it's fair to the kids. Once you decided to cross over, you had to understand that in order to take it any further, such as adoption, such as being public with it, that it affects other people. And that's the point that I was talking about, as long as it don't affect you. If I have to sit there and monitor my child's, what my child watch on TV, I would never think in a million years that they could turn to Fox or some other network and just blatantly see this with no problem because those wouldn't be the shows or the channels that I would block. And I had a problem with the cartoons from what they, the story they told me about the Teletubbies and I never really looked into that, all into that like that, but it's, 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 it's very serious. It's becoming more common. I think there's other things to do than to be commonly gay. There's, there, there's other things to do. When the, when the person's gay, trust me, they can't hide it, they can't deny it. It's good. They're, gonna, they're gonna live their lifestyle eventually. But for a little child, for a minor, I, I just think it's, it's not fair to them because I don't think they have a, a, a opportunity to choose other, other lifestyles and other, ways of, uh, other walks of life. I mean, do you think that, you know, you have, you have two kids, right? Uh-huh. You know, you watch, you watch, you know, you help raise these kids. You watch these kids grow up, you know, and you've been around other children as well. Do you think the kids are born gay or do you think that it was a, it's an environmental type of thing? Like a set of experiences? I think it's, I think it's more being accepted. I think it's easier to be accepted. And I, 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 I and I'm gonna be honest with you. It, it seems that way. It's easy to be accepted in the gay community than it is in the other community because there's, there's less things that you have to Prove in regular society, if you don't dress too good, you consider poor, middle aged, or nothings. And I think when, 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 I just never saw it so much. I maybe saw one gay person that was under the age of 18 my whole entire life until this last 10 years. Mm. And I think it's more of a trend. I think it's more of their attention seekers. They're looking for, they're, they're lonely. They don't have the support of their family and friends and, and, and their parents, and, as well as teachers and coaches and, and, and pastors and, and community leaders. I think if we get them more attention and get them, get they, they mind on other things, I think they will like, learn to realize that this ain't what I want. And, 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 and gay ain't something you try out. L- let me get this straight. Gay ain't something you try out. I've noticed a lot of, Women that was gay 10 years ago want babies now. That's not fair to your child. That's not fair to your girlfriend or your future baby daddy. Well, I mean, you talk about gay being a trend now. I mean, because for the first time in our history, you now have openly gay rappers that have had hit records. Like, I love McConan came out as gay. I don't, I don't, I don't have no, grown people that live their life. I have nothing against gay, openly gay marriages. I have nothing against them. I have nothing against gay people walking, holding hands, but I don't want you kissing and making out while I'm walking by in places that I probably got my kids. That's all I'm saying. I have no problem with that. If I see two, if I go on the beach and I see two men kissing, I'm a grown man and I'm uncomfortable with it. All I do is leave. Yeah, I mean, I don't particularly like two men kissing. Not my thing. I don't have a problem with them doing it, seeing it. You know, if it's ever on TV, I'd have to look away. Even on TV, I, you have the choice to change the channel. But like what I was yeah. saying with the kids, all these par- parental guys you had already put in place, you didn't expect this to come on ABC or Fox. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, Empire has a gay director. 
So he he wants to put that out there. Lee Daniels. Hey, man, I, I just and, and, and that's another thing. We don't go around announcing we're not gay. How many times have you had to tell somebody you was heterosexual? <laughs> None. How many times have you announced that? Right, but most people are heterosexual. Most human beings are. So you don't have to I, announce they're, they're, I mean, I, I, I look at more people as being homo sapiens than heterosexual. Okay. So, but that's not something, that's just like a woman walking in the club. I'm divorced, I'm divorced. She didn't walk in saying she was married. Hmm. So I just, I, just, I just think that it's just uncomfortable depending on your beliefs and your religions. And anytime you have 50-50 situations, you have to respect other people's mind and, and, and respect their, their space as well. That's all I'm saying. What do you think about rappers wearing dresses these days and dressing feminine and so forth? We just discussed it. They, 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 as long as they're comfortable with being gay, Men don't wear dresses. There, there's not one man dress in no clothing catalog. There's not one dress in the men or the boys department at no mall or, 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 or shopping store. Not one. Well, at one point, I mean, it's not really popular anymore, but a few years ago, there was like the long shirts that kind of looked like the, the skirts a little That's bit. That's feminine. That's feminine. Right, but, but those were, were so. The only people that wore skirts stores. was the Roddy Roddy Piper. What, they from Scotland? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's it. And the only, the only pretty, I don't even like pretty dudes. I don't like pretty dudes playing hard. Imagine Michael Jackson, a prince, playing uh, an American gangster. Okay. Michael Jackson and Prince, along with Millie Vanilli, those was the last, maybe the um, baby face and, and uh, a couple more dudes. Those were the last dudes that you accepted that was actually women loved them because their voices, how they dress and how they talk and it was a deal. After that, we didn't accept that no more. Hmm. Let me think about this. I men, mean, you got... men should be, I think the word man is masculine. Masculine is, is T-shirt, jeans, tennis shoes, shirt, tie, jacket. Well, when you did the Breakfast Club interview a while back, you, you said some things about Young Thug, the way he dresses with the dresses, and he actually responded to you. I don't, I, 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 I've never heard his response, and I personally, he, me and Young Thug is two different type of people, and that, that's why I never, that's why I never really, got in deep into it. I never even got offended. Anything he want to say and want to do. I don't wear dresses. I mean, I don't wear dresses. I don't even wear boxes. I wear boxer briefs. It's like, so I don't, I, I, I don't have no personal beef for Young Thug. If he have a problem about what I said, then that's understandable. But you know what I'm saying? But I personally have, a, I have sat here, like the worst of the world, I've sat here for the last couple of years, mad, pissed off about, about everybody doing this and doing that, till I have to realize, let them boys be happy. Let them be great. I'm going to let them be great. Whatever you're good at, I don't have to tell nobody that a man shouldn't wear a dress. I don't have to tell nobody that. I shouldn't have to tell them, and I don't have to tell them. Therefore, I'm, I don't wear dresses, so we have nothing in common, so there's nothing really to talk about between me and Young Thug. Yeah, no, I feel you, man. I, I think I think that in this day and era, like in this era where you could get as much attention as a major media outlet by having a popping Instagram page, I think dudes is doing things like wearing dresses. Like there was that one rapper, I think he may have been from Florida, the one that wore the wedding dress. You know what I'm talking about in that video? You talking you about know? the best in Florida, the 100 best in Florida? I don't even know. I don't know who that was made that list. I don't know who. No, 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 no. I'm You're not talking, talking about, about the dude that. who had the gun in his mouth. Right, that dude. I don't know him. I don't even know what neighborhood he's from, but <laughs> if that, there may be enough people to support him. He maybe could get him some money. But like I said, we're not enemies. I don't have a problem with him. You don't have a problem with me. I've, I've learned to mind my own business. I, 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 
I wouldn't wear a lot of things you would wear. My stomach is bigger than yours. You know what I'm saying? I'm so, I'm so 305, man. I'm so G'd up. I'm so real when it comes to this shit. To fake shit doesn't exist to me no more. Right. His name is a new age jerk boy. And uh, yeah, uh, where's he from? Video. Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale? Yeah, he went to Booker T. Washington High School. That's Miami. Okay. I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm to get back with you on that. I'm going to do my research. I'm going to do my homework on that one. Because he went to Booger T and Glibber for a lot of that. That ain't, that ain't mixed up. That, that's probably some, somebody playing with numbers and, and, and wording, you know? I mean, you saying that no one from, from, from the Miami area and would end up like that? Is this what you're saying right now? No, we have, I think, we, I think we're probably number three in gay people. But I don't think that gay don't go with machine guns. I mean, you know, Young Thug had guns all in his video. He claims blood. I mean, you know, like you, you see this type of thing. I mean, I, but I don't, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think Young Thug is gay. I don't think so either, but he definitely plays around with it. He definitely plays with the imaging of it. You know, be, I mean, I he talked about it has, it has a lot to do with the people around you and ours and everybody putting certain things in your ear. It, 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 it's all about knowing better. A lot of these people raise themselves these days. You were married at one point. Yeah, I'm, I'm married now. Oh, you're married now. Okay, I thought you were divorced or separated. No, I, I'm, 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 I'm supposed to be getting a divorce real, real soon, but I don't feel like it. <laughs> okay. How, how long you been married now? I've been married for a long time. Okay. By 12, 13 years. Now, now you said this, and I, and I actually agree that, you know, and actually what, what's funny is that me and Boosie got into a big sort of like debate about this in our last interview. All I'm saying is, is that, is that when it really comes to, to these real power couples, it ain't about the sex. It's about the bigger picture. You know what I'm saying? Bob Marley's wife stayed with him the whole time. He, Bob Marley was still married when he died. And how many kids did he have outside that relationship? But you know, she saw the bigger picture about what was happening. You have a you know I mean, you know the percentage of people seeing the bigger picture. Bob Marley wife, Bob Marley wife is a soldier. You know how I many people not seeing that bigger picture, man? You know after they divorce all they do is try to upgrade. It's an upgrade. I don't I don't know how your team is structured. Yeah. You know what I mean cuz I, I I deal with you directly, so I don't know. Yeah. But in, in my company if it was, women are the key to my success. It's not not, not, wi not women I necessarily sleep with, women who, who are in my life and I do business with and I trust. And, and you know what I'm saying? And right. women have a certain type of mind that men do not have. Yeah, yeah, I understand you know? that. Uh, but women never been like that with me. Because, uh, you know, we come up kind of, it's a different thing. It's yeah. like me and you, like, it's, it's a different. Women never been that. That, that soul that I can tell anything to because I come up in the streets and women are weak when it comes to the streets. You know, a woman, a woman gonna break. I believe if I was very, very successful financially, I believe a woman who could put up with my shit, a woman who I could trust, a woman who could, who could gain my trust, my love, take care of my kids, whether they was hers or not, keep something to eat, I, she would keep me out of trouble because knowing that I had to go home some nights and knowing that I couldn't do certain things, I believe she deserved as much as my money as I, I decided to give her, whether it's gifts, whether it's leaving it to her or whatever. I believe that the most, the most dangerous thing to people like us are family. You got cousins and, and, and brothers and sisters that you don't even have a close relationship to who feel like you owe them something. You got cousins that you had for 40 years have been your cousins for six months. And I always say a friend to everyone is a friend to none. I just think that, the, I think the cost of pussy has declined rapidly, has declined rapidly because the women are out there looking for somebody to take care of them instead of looking for somebody to help them. You filed for bankruptcy for the third time. Is that correct? I, I, I got, I got I, the idea from Donald Trump. Final answer. Okay. Final answer. Wh why did you actually file? Final answer, because Donald Trump filed. Final answer. Okay, you don't, you don't want to talk about it. All good. Donald Trump filed 
50 times. Ain't nobody asked him now time why he fouled. So you talked about having lupus before. Now you talked about how you stopped taking, you know, the, the prescription drugs. And for the last 20, 25 years, you've just been self-medicating. Yeah, been, I'm not, you know, yeah. I, I, I feel better. When I'm high, I feel better. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I have no addictions. I don't use crack. I don't use heroin. No opioids. But I, I feel I'm self-medicated and I feel wonderful. Now, in your music, do you actually talk about doing drugs as well? Have I ever talked about doing drugs before? Yeah, I mean, you talked about it in your interviews, but you actually talk about it in your music as well, doing drugs? Oh, I've, 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 I've talked about it plenty of times. I have one song called Ruby Red, where it say, I've been getting high since back in junior high. The problems I had back then, I still got them now. But I got it worse though, cause I always got a sore throat and my eyes stay red. And my clothes smell like weed smoke. Man, I think my kids know. Man, I hope my kids don't use or try some of the shit me and my parents did. I need to detox. I probably need God in my life. That's why my heart ain't been beating right. And I need to relax. I need to get out and get out and run about three laps and sit back and relax. No more of that, bruh. Where that clean at? I need to clean up my axe. Man, I really need, it's called Ruby Red, and the hook was like, early in the morning with him feeling blue. And it's talking about drinking coffee and, 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 and say, my girl smoking weed and blow. Three lines of coke that I cut with. You see what I'm saying? So when you look at like artists like Future, who got songs like, you know, when they talk about Molly Percocet, they talk about doing drugs. And it seems like these days in hip hop, it's more acceptable to be doing drugs than actually selling drugs. Now, what someone I'm who's- say, Future is the most intelligent in a rapper that I've ever seen that actually talk about drugs because people rap Molly Percocet, kids rap it and still don't know what it is. So that's not a bad thing. He know how to, he know how to trick them into liking it. Okay, but it's not just future. Now I heard it's the really one on the radio. I got bacon soda. I got bacon soda. I'm like, oh shit, they play that on the radio. I'm like, I gotta okay. drop me one like this. But I, I mean, as someone that's talked about doing drugs and records, when, when you see when you see these records coming out, and and you talk about you know the, the new generation does a lot more pills than we used to do, and, and the the effect that it has on children. I mean, Every, how everything do you feel about for it? everybody. That's for sure. Okay. Everything is not for everybody, that's for sure. And like I say, these are explicit rap lyrics are for grown people, adults. With that being said, it's up to the parent to monitor, like we was talking about TV. It's up to them to monitor what they listen to. Is when we were little, if we had cell phones, our parents would grab our cell phone and go in it whenever they want to, am I right or wrong? Yep. And don't lock no doors in the house. Don't keep going in and out the house. You had school clothes and play clothes. You had a favorite cartoon, a favorite actor, a favorite teacher, and mama was always right. These kids slam their doors. They mad at their mama. Come home when they want to. Call their mama and tell them I'm at my friend's house. No, you ask your mama, could you go to your friend's house in that area? So the problem is, is the people that are having these kids are they qualified enough to be parents. That's a one thing because that makes it definitely unfair for the child. Other than that, they have to monitor what they say and do around their kids. The harder you make for your kids to do wrong, the less chance they have, they will have doing it. You have to Real make tough. it hard for them. I mean, as someone that's really concentrated on their lyrics, their entire career. Like you could tell that you don't just go into the booth and just freestyle and go on to the next song. It seems no, like you really write. No, I sit write. there, I think about what I'm gonna say, and from, from how I start my records, you would know on my, I, check my, I probably have about eight tones of voice that I use. Uh, I use less words when I wanna, inf if I want something really, to, I really wanna emphasize something and put feelings in it. I take certain words off so I could drag words like nigga. And so I, I would take the words out before that. And yes, I don't, free, to me freestyling is just rhyming. Freestyling has no meaning, it can't help me, has no beginning, no, don't know where to end, don't know what street to turn down. When I take you, 
I could, you could take one of my songs and take out the hook or the chorus and push it together and you have a, a straight line. I mean, when you look at where, where hip hop is heading and you look at more mumble rap, when, when it's not really focused on lyrics, it's just really, you know, focused on more vibe. All that, all that, does, all that does is ensure I, I, me that I made the cut. The cut in which my, <laughs> I made the deadline of forever music. A lot of these mumble rappers, They'll be, it's over for their ass next year. So a lot of them won't make it throughout this year. A lot of them wouldn't go, wouldn't travel past five counties, north or south of where they live, where they live or where they grow up at. So I appreciate mama rappers. Y'all keep it up. You make me the last of the dying breed. Uh, about a year ago, a lot of people got upset because you told black women to tighten up. These Spanish and these white hoes, they just start getting finer than a motherfucker. Y'all black hoes better tighten up. I'm telling you. Tighten up. Y'all doing all that extra shit for nothing. You're not achieving nothing, bitch. You get your ass done, your titties done, and you're paying 150 to get your makeup done just to go to a motherfucker, a local club, bitch. Tighten up, ho. These Spanish and these white hoes is getting very spiffy on y'all. They fuck around and learn how to fry chicken. You always, this is useless. And, and do you know they forgot about that already? It's just, it's a trend. They just wanted to be part of something. Half of them tighten up. Half of them already tighten up. And they tell me, yeah, you right. I, I appreciate that. And yeah, I, 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 jumped the, I jumped the gun. A lot of them commented off of comments. A lot of them never saw the interview, never saw the uh, video. They commented off the comment. And then they said, oh, you, you say you respect the white women. No, I didn't. If anything, the Spanish and the white women should have been offended because I said all they needed to do was learn how to fry chicken. That was insulting after I thought about it. Not telling my black women they need to tighten up. They, my, they, the average black woman is in a relationship that lasts six months. That's not healthy for you or your kids. Materialistic things. I've watched, I, I've watched different speakers speak up on materialistic things. Everybody's materialistic. An old wise man once told me, if you could look in your closet, look in your driveway, and look inside your house and see more money than you can see when you look inside your bank account, you's a poor fool. The difference between hmm. me and Donald Trump filing bankruptcy, I lose when I file. He make other people lose. There's a big difference. All I want to do, eat and live, pay my kids. All I, I want to do, eat, live, pay my bills, and feed my kids. That's all I want to do. I, I think that that's, a, that's such an interesting comment. He said, if you look at your closet and your driveway and your house, and there's more money there than in your bank account. Fucking up you're real fucking bad. Up. Fucking up. And you know something? I, I, I said this also. And a lot of people got mad at me. I said that until your money is making money, and, you're and, essentially and everybody living paycheck, paycheck wants to be broke. fucking rich. I didn't grow up with no rich people. I know a lot of people that has been successful. I know a lot of people that has all right money, but they're not rich. They cannot stop what they're doing today. They can't do whatever they want to do and leave their kids and their grandkids nothing. You're not fucking rich. So stop saying I'm broke and I'm poor because I'm doing what they're pretending not to be doing, surviving. And the reason why I started so far at the back, because I didn't have no fucking credit. Ladies and gentlemen, please mm. protect your credit. Protect your credit. Trust me. What's really the, the financial advice as someone who's in their 40s and has seen the ups and downs? Financial advice is to raise your kids not until they're 18, not until they're of age, not until they decide that they want to have sex and hang out and drink and use drugs. Raise them until they're smart enough to know how to raise themselves. And just know that a friend to everyone is a friend of none. No new friends. No new friends. Your family 
is very important, but those are the people that know the most about you. Those are the people you should be totally honest with because those are the only people that should matter and should hurt you. Leave your little girls and your little boys off of social media. Leave them out of it. If they're under the age of 18, they don't need a Facebook, a Instagram, a Snapchat, or none of that shit. Most of the murders and crime and beefs and drug dealing and bad decisions that kids are making, they got this shit off of social media. If you don't believe it, that's why once a month, at least, in my city, once a month, not saying that it's the only time it happened, but at least once a month, I hear a parent crying, pleading about her child had been shot dead in the street. And the first thing they say is, he was a good boy. He didn't bother nobody. Stop it. You don't know what the fuck he was doing. You don't know what the fuck he was doing. Because you was doing what you was doing. When it's time for your kids to start hanging in the clubs that you want to go to, it's time for your ass to go home. When you gave birth to a kid and they got somebody pregnant, you became a grandma. You have to give that grandbaby the same love, the same respect, the same support that you gave your kids, the same support and love that your mama gave you. And I don't give a fuck if your child is not speaking to the other half of the baby's family. You have to be the bigger and better person. That's all I got to fucking say. And anybody who have a problem with anything I said on this interview, I want you to know I am Trick Daddy Dollars. I was not rehearsed, coerced, or forced into saying nothing I say. And if you don't like what I said, my famous word, my famous line all the time, you can kiss my whole family ass.